Okay, uh, so welcome back to this uh, video on uh, Laplace's rule of succession. Okay, so um, we uh, wanted to know what the probability of a parameter of a parameter of our parameter p, uh, which is the parameter uh, which is the probability that the sun will rise on a certain on an individual day. We want to know the probability that that is less than or equal to some constant k, given that the event e has happened. And uh, we applied Bayes' rule to say that this was equal to uh, the probability that uh, this little parameter is less than or equal to k uh, times the probability that E happens given that P is less than or equal to k uh, divided by the probability uh, that E happens. Okay, uh, so firstly we said that the probability that p is less than or equal to little k is just equal to k uh, because uh, this parameter is distributed uniformly i it's uniformly likely to be any value between 0 and 1. Now what we were working on is how to work out the probability uh, that event e will happen given that the parameter p is less than or equal to k. So basically what we are doing is we, uh, if we imagine our original sample space again, so this is our original sample space here, and it, cons it, c it has every possible event, so uh, it's the set consisting of every possible event, so uh, you have to, ha you have, well every possible outcome rather, sorry, uh, where you have every outcome consists of a, an, an order of sun rising, sun not rising, sun rising, sun rising, sun rising, sun rising, not rising, sun rising, for m plus 1 trials, and along with a probability parameter, p, uh, where uh, this parameter is the probability that on an individual day it happened, and we're saying uh, that this is our sample space. So now what we're doing is saying we're going to limit this sample space down, we're just going to look at all those events, uh, all those outcomes rather, in here, uh, where this parameter p was less than or equal to k. So this is, let's say, p is less than or equal to k. So all the events where p is less than or equal to k. All those outcomes where, uh, all, and I keep saying events rather than outcomes, I mean outcomes. Uh, all those outcomes where uh, little p was greater than k, they're down here somewhere. Uh, so for every possible value of p between 0 and 1, you have every possible 2 to the n plus 1 uh, possible uh, uh, combinations of n and s, uh, where n represents the sun not rising and s represents the sun rising. Okay, so what we want to know is what, uh, well, firstly, uh, we had an event in here, a blue, which we denoted blue, which was the event that, um, the event uh, e, uh, which was equal to the event that, um, the, the sun rose on the first S day, so it consisted of all outcomes uh, where uh, you had sun, 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 n times, then I don't care what you get on the n plus 1 time, and I don't care what your p-value is either. So put all possible values, uh, all possible outcomes, uh, into this set here uh, that satisfy that, i.e. where you get the sun rising for n days, and uh, basically what I want to now know is what is the probability of that event happening uh, given uh, that you are in uh, this subset uh, p is less than or equal to k. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we can divide this up into the law of total probability for a continuous random variable. So, uh, we know, we remember from uh, the video on the law of total probability with random variables that the probability that some event A happens is equal to the integral over all possible values that the random variable can take on. In this case, it's just uh, between 0 and, in this case, it's only up to k. It can only go up to k because we are doing conditional probability on, uh, on, the, um, on the set that p is less than or equal to k of the PDF. And now, uh, the PDF is the conditional PDF, so I'm going to put a bar there, f bar of x times the probability uh, that the event happens uh, given that um, that the uh, parameter is equal to some little x, okay, dx. So this is saying split this up, split this up basically into all the little events uh, that uh, which are, which are uh, the x that this parameter p, sorry, this parameter little p is equal to some constant x. So split it up into every possible value that it can take on between zero and infinity. Then find Given that the p is equal to x, find the probability that the event a happens, and then multiply that by the PDF 
are the conditional PDF now because we're working conditionally on this event that P is less than or equal to K. So basically what that means is uh, our original PDF uh, for uh, P was just a constant, it was 1. The problem is now uh, that uh, P can only take values between 0 and K. So what is the PDF now? Uh, it's no longer 1, it's gone up basically. Uh, because we want this area to be equal to 1, so we need some value up here, so let's say v, uh, such that vk is equal to 1, uh, so v must be equal to 1 over k. So the PDF, the conditional PDF, is now 1 over k, uh, so we're going to stick in 1 over k there, so 0 to k of 1 over k, and now what was our event that we were interested in? We were interested in the event that e uh, that E occurs conditional on this, but we'll drop the conditional now because we are just assuming that we are doing it conditional on there. So, in fact, well, I, I will write it anyway, actually. The probability that e, um, e occurs given that P is less than or equal to K, but we are working completely now viewing this as our probability space. Uh, so, in a way, yes, we do need to write that because uh, uh, to recognise that it's going to go in there in our equation, but uh, we don't need to worry about it too much. At times, the probability that E happens, given that P is equal to some little value x, dx. Okay, so what is the probability that E happens, given that P is equal to some value x? Okay, uh, so, um, this is going to be equal to... Um, uh, well, the probability that the event E happens, given that the P is fixed at some value X, that is quite an easy problem, because that's asking, what is the probability that the sun rises N times, N times, given that the parameter P over here, and given that you can have any value over here, uh, which, so we don't care what the value is there. So basically, that's just going to be equal to... Um, P to the power of n, uh, because on this, on this, um, on this, in this event, if we take the event that P is equal to a constant, so P is now equal to little x, and there are every possible event in this. There's every possible event in this. So you could have sun, not sun, sun, not sun, uh, sun, sun, not sun, uh, sun, etc. And you go on for n plus one times of that. That should be a big n. That should be a big n as well. Uh, at then. This is going to be effectively uh, binomially distributed. Uh, so the pr uh, we could uh, set up uh, Bernoulli random variables, as always. Uh, we could have, you know, x1, uh, which is mapping you onto either 0 or 1, depending on whether the first the first uh, trial was a uh, the sun rose or didn't rise. And again, the probability that it's going to rise uh, is given by p, and the probability that it doesn't rise is given by uh, q, or 1 minus uh, p. Uh, so if we want, um, and then we can go R next to, and we can go all the way up to x big N, and we want uh, the probability that x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to uh, big Xn is equal to N. So we want the probability that all of these random variables are equal uh, to 1. So we want the probability that x1 is equal to 1, uh, e and x2 is equal to 1, and x3 is equal to 1, uh, all the way up to xn is equal to 1, x big n is equal to 1, which is the same thing as this up here. Um, and we know that because these are independent uh, Bernoulli trials, uh, that this is just going to be equal to the probability that this, uh, that this uh, random variable x1 is equal to 1, times the probability that x2 is equal to 1, all the way down to times the probability that x big n is equal to 1 and that each of these, the answer is little p, so we get little p to the power of n. So just a recap of what we've done there. We've said that uh, we are now conditioning on this little parameter p being a constant, so being some fixed value of x. We have in this event, uh, or we can now view it as the whole probability space, uh, we have uh, lots of different outcomes. We have uh, 2 to the n plus 1 possible outcomes, uh, where you have uh, the sun rising or not rising in every possible n plus 1 positions. Uh, we can set up some random variables, x1, x2, all the way up to xn, where these random variables take on the value 0 to 1, depending on whether the sun rises or not doesn't rise. So x1 will map uh, an outcome s onto um, 0 if it's if the first entry is a, is a uh, not sun, uh, so first entry is a not sun, and 1 if it is a sun. 
Okay, uh, so the sun does rise, and uh, you can set up X, uh, all, all the way up to xn of these, uh, where xn is going to be uh, mapping each outcome onto 0 or 1, depending on the, um, the outcome of the nth trial. Uh, so it'll be 0 if the nth, uh, on the nth day the sun does not come up, and it'll be 1 if on the nth day the sun does come up. So basically, uh, if if we want the probability that event E happens, given that P is equal to 1, so we X, P is equal to X, sorry. Uh, so we're saying uh, the event E is the event that you get sun on all N days. So it's the event that X1, X2, all the way up to Xn is actually equal to 1. And because they are independent, uh, independent and identically distributed, this is P to the power of N. Uh, so basically, uh, the probability that E... Uh, e occurs given that p is equal to x is just equal to p to the power. Uh, well, sorry, it's x to the power of n. I should have yes. That uh, the value of the p is equal to x, so x to the power of n. Okay, so another piece of paper, I think. So uh, the probability that e occurs given that. Um, given that uh, the parameter little p is less than or equal to k is equal to the integral from 0 to little k of 1 over k times the probability that e occurs given that p is equal to x uh, dx. But we just showed that this was equal to x to the n. Uh, so now we get that this is the integral from 0 to k of 1 over k x to the n uh, dx. Now if we work out this integral, it's 1 over k, the antiderivative of x to the n is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, evaluated between 0 and k. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 1 over k uh, to the k to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, which is just equal to k to the big N over n plus 1. Okay, uh, so that it gives us the probability that, or, that E happens given that P is less than or equal to K. So, that gives us another part of Bayes' rule. So we uh, return back to our original problem, which is the probability that uh, little p is less than or equal to k, given that e has occurred. And we know that this is equal to uh, the probability uh, that uh, p is less than or equal to k, little k, um, times the probability that p is, um, sorry, the probability that event e happens given that p is less than or equal to k, um, divided by the probability that E occurs. Now, we know what this is. This is K. And we know now what this is. So that uh, adds on K to the N plus 1, divided by N plus 1. And now what we need to work out is what is the probability that E occurs in the first place. So, what are we now asking? We are now asking if we return back to our original sample space, uh, which consists of all, all outcomes where you can have any possible uh, combination of sun rising and not rising for n plus 1 days, and you can have any possible value of p uh, between 0 and 1, p is an element of um, 0 to 1, uh, then uh, we want to know, um, we want to know, given uh, the, there is an event in here, which is this event E, which is the event that the sun rises for n days, um, so all of the outcomes in here have sun, 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 uh, then I don't care what happens on the n plus 1th day, and I don't care what the probability is, uh, it's just any old value uh, between 0 and 1. Um, and basically, I want to know what is the probability of that uh, in uh, this probability space here. Okay, uh, so again, we can do this through the law of total probability. We can say that the probability of event E happening is equal to the integral over all... Again, what we're going to do is partition it up into every possible value that uh, P can take on. So p is an element of 0 to 1. So we're going to partition it up with every possible value of this parameter p. So up here somewhere will be the uh, the um, the um, event corresponding to p is equal to 0, uh, and it will go down. So you partition it up in this infinitesimal way, because of course this is a continuous way of partitioning it up. Uh, so uh, the law of total probability says that we integrate over all possible values that p can take on, which is 0 to 1, times the PDF. Now we're working back in our original PD, uh, our original probability space, uh, where the PDF of, uh, of each value of p uh, is just equal to 1, uh, times the probability uh, that uh, E happens, uh, 
uh, given that um, that x is equal to uh, some fixed value, um, that's, uh, well, sorry, uh, that p is equal to some fixed value x uh, dx. Uh, so now what we do is we, again, uh, the probability that the event E happens, given that P is equal to some fixed value X, uh, that's the exact same problem that we had before, uh, where we um, say that now we have a fixed value of P, uh, so basically we say we have a fixed value of P, so P is equal to X, and we are asking, what, given that that is true, what is the probability that E happens, i.e. what is the probability of getting sun, 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 n times, well we know that that is equal to um, X to the power of n. Uh, so this becomes equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of n dx. And we know, and this becomes uh, x to the n plus 1 uh, divided by n plus 1, evaluated between 0 and 1. And if we do that, uh, we get that this is equal to, um, uh, we get that this is equal to, um, we get that this is equal to 1 to the power of n plus 1, uh, divided by n plus 1. So it's equal to 1 over n plus 1.